Hey, it's Mazzy here, and I'm here for another ranking video. And uh, this is one of my favorite bands, Ecstasy. X T C. Andy Partridge and the gang. Uh, I'm not going to get into the history, but I'm going to rank my favorite albums of theirs. Uh, but before I do, I, I want to show uh, some compact discs uh, so I don't slight the compact disc fan out there. Uh, I usually kind of concentrate on vinyl, although I do expand into the digital world as well. But um, I just want to show these because there's a plethora of XTC comps and parts and pieces and things that if you really, really dive in after you get uh, through the core albums, here are some uh, suggestions. First, in terms of the core albums, these are four of the albums that I have uh, that are uh, expanded editions of four of their records. These are, these are a combination of uh, remastered versions. Stephen uh, Wilson uh, remixes, 5.1 remixes and beautiful packages. And um, I don't even know if these are available anymore, but uh, they're highly recommended and uh, really beautiful. I'll get into these records as I rank them, but I just wanted to show these. And this, they sound pretty amazing for compact discs. Um, but also there's a lot of comps and uh, First of all, these are two later, uh, Homegrown and Homespun, and I'll get into what these are about also later, uh, but there's various formats of these as well. Really became pretty much of a, a duo by this point. Uh, I'll showcase that. This is a import Rags and Bone Buffet Ecstasy. Uh, this is Rare Cuts and Leftovers, uh, fun stuff, you know, Andy Partridge, XTC, is one of the rare bands that, that in so many ways, their outtakes and alternate versions are as good in many cases as some of their uh, deep cuts on their record. So it's if you're into the band, it's a great thing to dive into. Uh, this is a wonderful comp. Uh, this was on Virgin Records, and this is actually, I think, at, towards the end when they were leaving Virgin, as I recall. Coat of Many Cupboards, Cupboards. Cupboards, cupboards, you know, I'm not going to get my English pronunciation. Uh, four discs of, um, you know, demos and alternate versions and a lovely, lovely book and package. And uh, this is a highly recommended set. And this is one of those uh, CD comps that I like to put on random and just have, have at it. Uh, and then also, and this, this is a beautiful, this is XTC, uh, their BBC output. You know, the great thing about these live BBC, Beatles at the Beebs, Yardbirds at the Beebs, Bowie at the Beebs, everyone at the BBC. Um, they're just different great sessions. So this is XTC Sessions with lovely um, colored jewel cases and a nice little booklet. Uh, so again, if you're into the band, it's great to hear them live. Um, I saw XTC once live. I'm fortunate enough because, because of... Uh, Andy Partridge's phobia <coughs> of, of, of live gigs. They didn't really play a lot. I think they played maybe two, three times in the Bay Area, as I recall. But I saw them at the Stone, a club that was uh, just there for a short time uh, on uh, Broadway, on the Strip and Broadway in San Francisco. That's reverted back to being a strip club. And then there's this great collection. So if you want to go even deeper down that rabbit hole, jump into the Andy Partridge Fuzzy Warbles. I have eight volumes of these of CDs. And what these are, uh, these are a series of demos, works in progress, um, songs he was working on for aborted projects, uh, like some Disney films. I think it was maybe James and the Giant Peach was one of them. He was kind of, uh, kind of going after. I think Randy Newman kept winning out on <laughs> his. I mean, don't you think Andy Partridge would be great for uh, these children anime stuff? Because his writing is is so fun, but um, this great selection of CDs, fun stuff. Again, another thing you put on random and just have a great time. So uh, we're gonna get in now in a minute to uh, the ranking videos. And uh, again, one man's opinion. I'm going from the bottom to the top and um, pretty much all the records. Excite, no comps in the vinyl and no best of and things like that, just the core records. Okay, now on to the vinyl album rankings, XTC's top 12 records in order from 12 to 1. How did I get 12? Well, I'm not showing any comps. 
I have overlapped and combined uh, two categories of records, which you'll see when we get into. And again, these are uh, Mazzy's opinion. These are what I'm into now in 2021 when I'm recording this. So let's go through uh, the catalog of XTC. Now, 12 albums. Every album of theirs has some great material, and there's not one dog in the bunch. But again, I kind of culled these and uh, collated them, you know, met with my panel of myself, my only judge, because I'm judging these. And uh, here we go, starting with number 12, uh, Mummer, number 12. This is an album from um, 1983. This is on Geffen Records. This record just never, I never like grabbed onto. There's some great stuff on here. Uh, Love of a Farm Boy's Wages, Human Alchemy, Funk, Pop and Roll. Uh, it's got the quirkiness of um, obviously uh, Andy Partridge all through it. So coming in number 12, uh, Mummer. I always want to say Murmur. I keep thinking of Murmur because of R.E.M., but Mummer, XTC. Coming in at number 11, the Big Express, XTC. I never liked this cover. Really, to me, didn't fit the material. Uh, this is also on Geffen Records. Um, this is an interesting record because this is sort of a, an overview of their hometown, Swinton. Not A little conceptual in a way. Now, uh, the whole band came from Swinton, and Andy Partridge to this day, I believe, lives in Swinton as sort of the like the town <laughs> famous person. I'm sure there are others. Uh, decent record, some great stuff. Again, there's always great deep cuts. As, as I said when I went through fu fuzzy warbles of the of the CDs at the beginning, Andy Partridge is an amazing um, songsmith, main songwriter, and just like really pumps uh, the songs out. So you can't go wrong with this or any of their records. But again, I'm coming this, uh, bringing this in at number 11, and that's uh, the Big Express XTC. I just think uh, it, it doesn't quite uh, gel for me as much as some of the other ones. Now, before you get all your panties in a bunch, of course, it's Swindon. Swindon with a D, right? Swindon. I knew it. I just, shit happens. Now, the top 10. Top 10, Go To. Uh, go To is their second album. Uh, XTC second album. There's some great stuff on this record, and I quite like it. This is the American version. Uh, the UK version uh, didn't have any of the singles on it. I think there's two tracks added to it uh, for this version, and I like this album uh, qu quite a bit, but it's still number 10 on my list. Now, to me, the most interesting thing, interesting story, interesting story about this album is the cover concept. This is a cover designed by a Hypnosis who did so many records for um, everyone from Led Zeppelin to obviously Pink Floyd, Storm Thurgerson, and his team did McCartney Wings albums and 10CC albums and on and on and on. And when uh, Virgin uh, and XTC were meeting with uh, them to put together a cover concept, I think several ideas were presented and XTC didn't like any of them. And as they were walking out, they saw a large version of this leaning against a wall and apparently this is the generic cover that Hypnosis was trying to sell all these bands and every band passed on it. And it starts, this is a record cover. This writing is the design upon the record cover. The design is to help sell the record. We hope to draw your attention to it and encourage you to pick it up. When you have done that, maybe you'll be persuaded to go listen to the music on and on. This is, in this case, it's XTC's go-to album obviously modified for XTC, but I just love this cover concept. I saw it almost like conceptual copy. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I don't, I don't know if anyone who owns this record has ever read the whole thing. I have actually several times and it's very funny. And on the back um, obviously has the information and the details of the band. This is the back cover, a catalog number, you know, insertion here. Um, so number 10, go to, uh, XTC was, um, be, at this point, their first couple albums were almost like a power punk band. They didn't really quite fit punk. They were more melodic than most punk bands, but they hadn't quite really got into that psychedelic uh, power pop sound quite yet either. They were really crossing over at this point. And um, this record came out uh, in 1978. They had two records that year, they debut and this. And following that up is the debut. Coming at number nine is XTC, White Music. Um, 
I didn't get these first two albums to begin with. I started out with their third album, which I'll talk about a little later. Again, in sort of their punky, power punky stage. I like this record a lot. There's a lot of great stuff on it. Short, succinct songs. The maniac of uh, Andy Partridge and his kind of quirky uh, singing style. Of course, um, the two songs that were getting a lot of uh, radio play or somewhat of radio play. Radio's in Motion and This Is Pop. And XTC coming in number nine, their debut album, White Music. Coming in number eight, I'm showing two at once because these were uh, conceptualized as a double album, and that is Apple Venus and then the follow-up, Wasp Star. These are really good, ambitious records, uh, down to two members at the end, um, and a lot of orchestration on it. So it's a really different feel. It's, it's majestic, but intimate, almost like string quartets rather than a large scale orchestra. But there's some real wonderful melodic things in here and movements and, and sort of neoclassical movements that really kind of change up the band. And um, these were reissued in the last couple of years on um, Ape Records, sort of the uh, label they're reissuing all these records on on vinyl over the last several years. So coming in at number eight, Apple, Venus, and Wasp Star together, originally conceived as a double album, but their funds weren't there to record it all at once. And so they came out in uh, two stages. Coming at number seven, Nonsuch. Um, I believe, as I recall, this is the last album they did for Virgin Records. Uh, this is a reissue it's produced by Gus Dudgeon. Gus Dudgeon, great producer who had worked on uh, the self-titled, the first, what, three, four, five Elton John records in the 70s and got a great sound on this. I think some people weren't enamored by this record, but I quite like it. It got a lot of uh, video play on MTV because of the song, The Ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead. And I think there's a lot of great, great uh, songs on here. Again, the quirkiness of Andy Partridge and... Um, Dave Gregory, Colin Molding. Um, I th think that is really the core of XTC for the most part. And um, this is a gatefold that they expanded so it sounds better over uh, two LPs because I think the original was on, squashed onto one record, but um, this is a fantastic record. Coming in number six, Oranges and Lemons. What a great psychedelic pop collection of songs. Um, this is this is a, a, a favorite of mine. Of course, it's number six on this list. And um, I think this is a, a fantastic record from 1989. Again, the, the core three members that really kind of, uh, to me, are the main, you know, nucleus of this band. But um, it wasn't just Colin, I mean, it, excuse me, it wasn't just Andy Partridge who was writing uh, the song, Dave Gregory and Colin Molden as well. But um, what I like on here, I like uh, The Mayor of Simpleton. Again, another song that got a lot of uh, uh, traction, King for a Day. Great record. Pop psychedelia. Really brilliant pop psychedelic record. There you go. Okay, number five. I'm including these together. Now, these are uh, XCC under the name Dukes of Stratosphere. They were having a rough time selling records um, for Virgin, and they had some studio time, and they had this uh, idea and this studio time to do this really interesting project where they became another band, like a la Sgt. Pepper, but really another band, the Dukes of Stratosphere. And it was released as Dukes of Stratosphere, not as XTC albums. There was the EP, 25 O'Clock, and then Sonic Sunspots, uh, the full-on album. And I'm putting these together because to me, they, they go together. And um, they came out over, I think there was an album in between these. But um, I really like these records. Very psychedelic. Recorded in the vein um, and on some of the equipment of, of what like a 66, 67 album, psychedelic album would have been recorded. Just really fun, upbeat. And actually, it charted better than an XTC album at the time. And these are the reissues that came out. These are wonderful packages. Um, these came out in the last several years too, gatefolds. And uh, they're really lovely uh, done on Ape again there. 
own in-house custom moniker label. Just love these two records. 25 o'clock and Sonic Sunspot. XTC as the Dukes of Stratosphere. Coming in at number four on the XTC albums ranked. The album that I first got into XTC. What a fantastic record. Uh, this is Drums and Wire. Beautiful record, beautiful sound. The guitar on this is really, really wonderful. And of course, Colin Moulding actually got the hits initially before Andy Partridge. Life Begins at the Hop and Making Plans for Nigel. Making Plans for Nigel is the song that I got into XTC. There was something about that song. It had a moodiness to it. Again, the guitar playing on that, the riff on that. It's just beautiful. I, I love this record. This is such a, such a great, great, great record. There's this one really interesting song called Complicated Game, and um, that's a song that Andy Partridge, and his vocal on that is really, really wild and really interesting. So I think this is a, a, an amazing record, and I could have definitely put this in the top three, but I think um, you know being here at number four is appropriate because, again, XTC had a lot of wonderful, wonderful records. But to me, this is a maturity... Uh, and a change uh, that happened to them that uh, really kind of made them extra special. XTC, Drums and Wire. Coming in at number three, a beautiful album with another great hypnosis cover and one amongst my very favorite is Black Sea. What a great record. This is a um, original American record uh, this came out uh, on Virgin through RSO Records, came out with this green bag, and then has this beautiful diving bell. It's amazing that Hypnosis, I think this is Hypnosis, it's got to be, right? Uh, also did a diving bell kind of style with uh, Deceptive Bends with X, uh, with uh, 10cc. 10cc, XTC. Stranger Than Truth, coincidence there. But beautiful, beautiful record. Uh, the sound of this one also is is wonderful too. But Towers of London is a great song. Sergeant Rock, and this is produced by Steve Lillywhite, <clears throat> who was one of the hot producers at the time. Generals and Majors is such a perfect song, and um, Colin Moulding just has a different style, obviously. And I think, you know, I kind of wish he got more writing and Andy kind of like let him out. Andy obviously took over but Andy is a major talent and it, it kind of became sort of his band and he was the driving force but Colin's uh, singing his arranging his uh, writing was a really beautiful sort of alternate to uh, Andy Partridge and breaks up the breaks up these albums just beautifully so I love that but of course Andy Partridge has a respectable Street, which is a, a great song on here too. So uh, his songs are great. I mean, the wonderful record, the number three in my uh, XTC rankings of uh, albums. Love this record, love it, love it to death. And coming in now at number two. This makes a lot of top lists for XTC and it's a tempestuous album that is a brilliant beautiful album. Some people think it's their most accessible record. Some people feel it's their most their most beautifully recorded record, and that is Skylarking. Uh, this is a promo copy, my original promo copy I got, produced by Todd Rundgren, and I won't get into the details of it, but it was really a volatile recording process, and uh, back and forth, uh, bickering during, before, during, and after. Well, they're at a point, I think, with Virgin Records that they had to pick a producer. And of all the list, I think it was Colin, maybe, who recognized Todd Rundgren. I don't think Andy Park just knew who Todd Rundgren was. Fantastic producer, obviously. And they went up to Bearsville. Uh, they got out of the UK and recorded this, uh, I believe, in upstate New York. And then, of course, Todd Rundgren takes the tapes and does his thing. And uh, Andy Partridge was incensed, incensed about it. Um, but what a great record, right? What a great record. Opening up with that sound of Summer's Cauldron and, and morphing into grass. It's got that total Beatlesque, you know, peppery, 
uh, fusion of, of different kinds of sounds and pop melodies, fantastic songwriting, great acoustic guitars and electric guitars and vocals. Um, there's a song that uh, is not on this version, that wasn't on the original version, and that is Dear God. And Dear God, I want to include that in here too. This is a 12-inch import single of the song that was on the B side of the single and radio stations started playing it. And uh, originally, uh, Andy Partridge didn't want to put it on the album because he was, he was it was literally the fear of God or the, fil the, the, the fear of the right wing Christian uh, people thinking that he was mocking it and everything. But it's a beautiful, beautiful song and it got traction from radio and they actually added it to the album, this next pressing of the album and the CD. This came out, I think, in 1986. Um, yeah, 1986, Skylarking. What a fantastic record. Again, Big Day, 1,000 Umbrellas, Dying, The Man Who Sailed Around the World, uh, Sailed Around the Soul, The Man Who Sailed Around His Soul. A gorgeous record. Really a perfect record. And this easily could have been my number one record. I think this is probably the obvious choice uh, for a lot of people, which is fine with me but I love this record. Skylarking, 1986, produced by Todd Rundgren. And then my number one, my favorite record, is XTC's English Settlement. There's something about the simplicity of the cover, the, the sound of the music, ball and chain, senses work, working over time, to me is a great pop record that goes a little deeper. Melt the Guns, of course you know what I how I feel about that. English Roundabout, all of a sudden. I mean, possibly Song for Song, Skylarking is the better record, but there's something about this record that works for me. And, you know, it could be a tie of one and two. I love this record. And since I'm showing these, these are the expanded box sets came out with the Stephen Wilson mixes, CDs, records, really beautiful uh, sounding versions. They came in slipcase boxes, and I just adore the sound of these records. So these are my favorite rankings, top 12 uh, XTC records, plus a few more. And again, it's always subjective, and put your uh, comments below uh, what you think they are, what your favorites are. And again, we all have a different taste based on when we heard these, the mood we're in, kind of music we like, and there's so many, um, there's so many opinions on this music on any music so again thanks for watching i really appreciate it mazzy loves you